Welcome to this session of uh, the tax webinar. Uh, this morning we are going to look at uh, uh, validation of motor vehicles, of course skewed towards uh, advanced income tax. Uh, thank you so much for always being part of us when we are broadcasting this because it also gives you an opportunity to learn a lot uh, on what you do not know and what is happening around here. With me are in the URA studios here at the URA Tower is uh, a man that I have known for some time, uh, Edgar Atwijushe. He's going to introduce himself to you and take you through uh, uh, this uh, part of the presentation. Uh, Edgar is, uh, is uh, a technical person in terms of uh, licensing and we are very sure that uh, most of you who have come to the URA headquarters service office have actually interacted with him. He holds a wealth of experience and knowledge, and uh, we are going to have a very fruitful discussion, I guess. For those of you who have uh, any issues, questions, uh, queries, please uh, utilize our various channels. We have uh, YouTube, we have Facebook, we have uh, various social media channels, but also on this particular webinar, we have uh, uh, avenues where you can give us uh, feedback such that we can respond to your issues. Feel free to keep your feedback coming in as we progress. Uh, Edgar, you're welcome, and uh, Thank you. I'd like you to introduce yourself to the public out there who are watching you, listening to you, and uh, thereafter you take us through what you have prepared for us this morning. Thank you, Robert, once again. Uh, hello, Uganda. Edgar Atwijuche is my name, uh, the head of business at motor vehicle licensing, what most of us call it, uh, headquarters service office, Nakawa. Now today, uh, I'm glad to take us through the various processes uh, we perform at motor vehicle licensing or headquarters service office. Majorly, validation, uh, of course, skewed towards uh, advanced income tax, motor vehicle advanced income tax. Now, uh, at licensing or in a, uh, at headquarters service office, we do not perform these duties on our own. Now, these duties or processes are performed together with the licensing instructions, uh, read with the Uganda Traffic Road and Safety Act of 1998, of course, and the URA Process Management Guidelines. Yes. Now, Validation. What do I mean by validation? Uh, we've at office we receive uh, various queries, uh, various clients, all of them, you know, uh, trying to inquire about these processes. So we thought it wise to come here and, uh, you know, I take you through the these easy processes. What most of us think are very tidy or are very hard, but they are very easy. Now, validation is a process of uh, transferring, uh, of transition from the old system to the new system. What do I mean? Uh, there are people who have green logbooks. It is from the manual system to the online e-tax system. People who have green logbooks or green registration books then to the white registration books. Uh, I have samples here. I came along with them. Uh, the green logbook looks like this. Yes. So when we do validation uh, to a white logbook, the white logbook is this. Yes. Actually, Edgar, I have seen uh, some logbooks that are not specifically green, mm. especially for cars that used to have the big, oh, the big uh, number plates. The they number have plate. like uh, some pink. have pink, yes, yes, quite yes, yes. very many colors. Yes, yes, Are yes, you yes. meaning that whoever has something that is not white yes. is supposed to, to change it? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, thank you, Robert, for that. Yeah, they, they actually we call them vintage, those vintage vehicles, which had the big, big plates. Historical. We, uh, historical. <laughs> we call them uh, uh, six we call them six-digit plates. Yes, all those are supposed to validate to get on the white uh, the white logbook. 
Yes. Please proceed. Yes. Now the uh, the requirements that you must have uh, in order to validate your motor motor vehicle. It can be a motor vehicle, motorcycle, tricycle, uh, trailer, name it, engineering plants, all of them. Now, uh, there are important parts that we must note on this validation. The first one being the applicant details. Yes, on the applicant details, what do I mean? Uh, first and foremost, the vehicle must be registered in your names. In that green logbook, in this green logbook, like we see here, uh, I'm not going to mention the name, but on the owner, the last person, the last owner should be the person to validate. In this case, okay. the person who is here is the one supposed to do what? To validate. Yes. Now, when you have a tin, the tin must be a current one, because you realize we used to have those old tins, beginning with P, P04, those things, but it must be a, a current team. Now that team, you must also have a password to that team. Yes. Okay. So when you have a password to that team, those are the applicant details. It is enough. The second one is the vehicle details. Yes. You must have the details of the vehicle you really want to validate. Yes. You cannot validate without the details of the motor vehicle. Now, uh, the details I talk about... Uh, what I mean, I mean the make, you know, uh, the manufacturer's model, the year of manufacture, the color, you know. I need all the particulars of the motor vehicle. Because uh, at this moment, we are like in first time registration. When you're doing validation, we are putting the vehicle in our system, in our e-tax for the first time. Yes. Okay. So we must be very keen when we are inputting these motor vehicle details. Because any mistake or any error, we shall it will be rejected. Yeah, because we need clean information on the system. So basically, mm. what one needs to do is to get the information as properly laid out in the green or any color logbook. Yes. Put them onto the system, utilizing their account that they have with the URA on the URA web portal. You put in your team, you put in your password, you open, and then you enter these details in the system. Is that what you mean? Exactly. That's what I mean. Thank you, much for that. Now, uh, after you've added in these details, then you will submit. But now, uh, like we're talking about the second, which is motor vehicle details, you must have them at hand. Now, there are people. Who, uh, who are not aware of who is the registered person. In this case, they do not have this green logbook, but the person has possession of the motor vehicle, uh, but he does not have the details. But the experts can inspect. You can check your vehicle and you check, uh, you see this is where my chassis is, the year of manufacture is on the seat belt. you can do those parts. But now that is the hard bit. What you do, you apply for what we call search and certification. Search and certification. Yes, search and certification. We give you details of the motor vehicle at URA. You just write a letter, uh, a letter, attach your ID, a copy of your valid ID, request for search and certification uh, for motor vehicle registration number like UAG 040R. Yes. Then and who do they write this letter to? Do no. they write it to you, to URA? To yes, they write to URA. They write to the supervisor motor vehicle registry. Okay. Yes, because uh, at licensing or headquarters service office, we are we, we have a big registry. You know, all the information regarding motor vehicles is with us at the headquarters service office. So you write to the motor, supervisor motor vehicle registry to get that information. So we shall give you information in relation to that motor vehicle, and that information is the one you will use to do what to validate. Do they pay anything, or it is just a free service? Oh yes, oh yes, you you they, you pay. Uh, such a certification, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is uh, 60,000 Uganda shillings. Yes, that information we own it. Yes. Okay. Mm. Now, after that, in, in the third part that is uh, important is registration details. Yes, uh, towards the end of the application or when you are applying for validation, uh, the requirements, the vehicle number, you must have the vehicle number. Yes. Yes. Uh, we need the date of uh, of the re of registration, current registration, but that current registration people may not even remember the time that that vehicle was first registered in Uganda. You put any date, then upon approval 
by our officers at, at headquarter service office, they will indicate the right date. Yes. So you must also indicate on those registration details, you must indicate the type of motor vehicle. We've actually had cases of people putting in wrong type of application. Uh, wrong type of application, I mean uh, motor vehicle, motorcycle, engineering oh. plant, trailer. Yes. So if it is a saloon car and you put a trailer, yes, uh, like errors are human. Yes. A, it may be approved by, by mistake or by error. And then the further the post validation processes may not be, uh, we, may, we might meet a challenge. So that's why you find we request for rollbacks so that we correct the, the error that was made at, uh, at uh, first time registration. Yes, that's what happens. Now, going to this uh, type of application, mm -hmm. um, is there a way that uh, this particular individual can be assisted? Because you see, mm -hmm. what we are telling them to do, yes, they can do it, uh, but then you find uh, there are those individuals that may not be in position to actually even see, because what I know, I have ever validated a vehicle, mm -hmm. and uh, down there they will ask you for maybe the serial numbers of yes. the vehicle, yes, okay, yes, on yes, the yes. number plate. Yes. So you look for these things and you actually cannot even cannot press them. Yes. Is there any kind of help that uh, you are, it does extend to these individuals? Yes, actually, if you've not put a serial number, we uh, it is credit. So you must put some numbers. Now, if you put numbers, actually, I, us I usually guide clients, put zero times four, like zero, 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 zero. Four times. Uh, four times. Yes, when you put zero, 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 four times, the person, the approving authority in your validation will indicate the right serial number. Oh, oh yes, yes. Now, uh, going back to still uh, this uh, validation bit, there is um, where your vehicle actually has a third party endorsement. Mm -hmm. Remember, people were using these vehicles to obtain loans from yes, commercial yes, banks. Yes, 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 so it has a third party endorsement. And probably, you find even the logbook may be with the bank or mm -hmm. someone has just a photocopy. Mm -hmm. how, how do they manage this kind of situation? Actually, how I have told you, you might find you, you bought your car from someone not even knowing that the vehicle had a caveat. You, what the person did, what the seller did, he gave you the, log, the, the motor vehicle, with the book, with the sorry, the keys, ah, you drove away, paid him, ah, and business was done. Now, what you need on that, uh, when you apply for such a certification, we shall give you the information. If there was a caveat, definitely you are must be in the know. Then it will be indicated there, not to be transferred with this without the consent of this or the the equity bank endorsement. There is an equity bank endorsement. Yes. So we shall also give you that information. Now, after when you are doing validation, when you are validating, yes. it is important to note that there is where you will reach and they request you uh, for attachments. Yes. When there is an attachment, an endorsement, that is at the end, at the particulars. Okay. Yes. You indicate endorsement, equity bank. Okay. Yeah. On the occasion that you don't indicate that endorsement, the approving authorities, because when they are approving, we have a file, the original file. Where the this vehicle was actually where exactly registered. Exactly, where this vehicle was And that registered. is why our dear clients mm. go wrong. Because mm. you may want to tell a lie to you are uh, thinking that probably when uh, you register this as uh, maybe a saloon car, yet it is an engineering plant, mm. there is uh, some, you know, uh, Ugandan, sometimes mm. people change the chassis, so they change the vehicle from a particular to another particular. Mm. So that kind of decision, not knowing mm. that uh, these are when the officer in licensing mm -hmm. is uh, approving, mm -hmm. they approve against something. something so I think uh, the public needs to understand mm -hmm. that the officer who is going to validate, who is going to look at this in the system, mm -hmm. is actually checking it against mm -hmm. something where this vehicle was originally mm -hmm. written. Meaning that there is no way mm -hmm. you can provide the wrong detail and then approval will be made. Could it be uh, one of the reasons for some bit of prolonged approvals that we see sometimes? Yeah, sometimes that's what happens. But now, uh, actually that is a really good good idea. Because what happens, like, uh, I'm going to give you an example of minibuses. We, like those minibuses which were imported, uh, those times, you have a green registration book. Uh, it came with uh, particulars. It comes as a, a commercial vehicle, as a van, without seats behind. Those okay. the, the minibuses which we call matatus or uh, mm, mm, mm. Uh, yes the taxis yes mm. so when you import that vehicle take it to Kiseka and they put in 
a mito. A mito. The seats, yes. yes. People call them a mito. The seats. <laughs> now, when you put in the, when you put in those seats, the vehicle changes. True. And at this time, we see you've not yet validated it. Now, uh, you are supposed to do what we call alteration. Alteration, alteration. of vehicle details. Now, in this part, uh, the vehicle is not yet online. So what we do before validation, uh, in most cases what people do, they validate as, they, as it was in, imported at first time. Oh, without factoring in the old. Yeah. What are they trying to do? Are they trying to dodge alteration yeah. fees? Are there fees paid on uh, alteration? Yes, they are definitely there are fees paid. But oh. you see, what happens, uh, someone does not want his application to be rejected. So he says, okay, let me validate, it. let me apply in the mm. way it was. So that they validate it like that, they approve it like that, then maybe I can do alterations later. Of which, uh, Ugandans were a bit uh, were a bit slow on validating these, these vehicles. Someone, as long as you have your vehicle, no one stops you to ask you why these parts are not altered. You people tend to do what? To, to ignore and drive. But now on validation for minibuses, we shall request you for an inspection report. Yes. Wow. And now that's when it is uh, we get in a real, in a real technical bit. You see, this topic is very interesting. Actually, uh, you, you talked about inspection. Yes. Inspection. When, under what circumstances, is a vehicle asked for inspection? Yes, that is the first one. Now, uh, when you validate a minibus, which was imported as a van, we shall request you for the inspection because we know. At that time, there is a likelihood that you have added, added seats in that vehicle for minibuses specifically, like that one. Yes. Or when you apply and uh, we find one of the particulars, let's say engine, is different from the, the first registered engine. Yes. We shall request you for inspection. When they are approving, they, they will instead reject. And in the rejection remarks, uh, they will tell you, please, they will write to you, please, you are advised to take the vehicle for inspection to any nearest URA office. So actually inspection is done at any URA of your convenience. So if you are in a, if you are in Usheni, do it from Usheni. If you are in Barara, you do it from Barara. If you are in a, uh, Kitugum, do it from Kitugum, any nearest URA office. So that means that for inspection, mm -hmm. Uh, the person yes. who has the vehicle mm -hmm. brings it to the URA office and then the officer there tries to verify yes. what is on the vehicle against what is on the record. Yes, yes, I think that is very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, when we are addressing these audiences, we need to... Sometimes, okay, you will allow me to mix because... Chino chetuliko, echa validation. Waga luku manyanti. Na dala katingaba nafe, haba gubaba taxi, haba gubaba basi, haba gubaba pichi pichi, haba wabali mboda boda industry. Banji nyo kubanga, zinu service bajifuna. Banji aga doku manya. Omutu nga ina kadi, nga ankade. Chiche yeta gokola, kadi yeyo kubela nti ajichusa, nida kusistim, nebelanga. Mm. <laughs> Immediately. So, mm. katumu tu baba ina hikar uh, chini hikade. Nga mm. uh, cha kuzi sakati, cha moto kai. Mm. Yena arajibu kwa nchi kujiana tu kwa watu wiko hichuita validation. Mm. Mm. Ne tujite kama systemu. Banga baba ina card waiti, chitegeze moto kai no chini systemu ya fya yuara e. Yes. So, baba ina kwa nchi, o kujite kama systemu, atu wenye mara kujite kama systemu, kurukwe biangua. Mm -hmm. Kwaanga kuliko processes ya ujia kukura mm -hmm. Nga kadi umazimu jitika msystem Ezija kuwangu ila Na hiyo katibu wabwe ojari na mgrini 
ezo process zya kolatiza zya karubira eh kati usobola kugamba kati third party kati maito sobola kufuna third party yogera ku kintu cha third party cyo kubanga banji bakaba bagamba tusobola kufuna third party batugambe kintu cha fechiri card tulina nkade cyogere ke kintu cyo bakimanya ukiraba kati tusobola kufuna third party ngato ina ngo ine yo eno card ukitegera oyino kusoka no gora chi eno moto kanoje tika ku system ya fe then mu mwana kuteka ku system ya fe no lyo kanoje gora chi no funa third party yeah actually katfunye tfunye ba clients banji nyo mu office bagara chi ngabagara validation eno tujita validation ba omufunza afunzi kuteka moto ka kujija mu system ya ye enkade kujiteka mu system ya ne mpya yeah ate chijana chi chijana advantage easy era wo mbadenze ja ntikati chinga sachi kubanga nyinzo kuba kadi ya nenjirira kubana jitwala mu bank ebisere ebyo nembalo ni kati nyinzo kubanga sina nyo bweta abugwa koze sakadi eno chinyamba chitya kakati olaba kati ngabwe kugambye twali tuli ku alteration alteration kuchusa parts e kuchusa tundu wa parts ezibade kuchi ku moto keyo ngobwe leta mini basi ne ingire gwanga ngine emitwe satu kati notongera mu mitwe meka ne nebera ne mtu 14 kitegera kati boyongera mu ejo mitu 14 emoto kakasanga elimu system au chiba chango gena no gena no gena mtini yo nokola chi no chusa zino zino parts kitegera kati goba bomaro kujivalidating transfers transfers kwanga kati eno eno card to sobola kuji transferring osobola kuji transferring go isem court at the court procedure nazo mbavu 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 musigisagala kulimba bantu mpamvu kubanga onyizo kusanga ati moto kana jugura kugwe nawe wajugura ku muntu mulala naye nga katisobola kola chi ona sinza mulaba yesinza kulaba ati mwe basaba kulaba una ayasuka kola chi kubera mukadi eno ko chiba chiba chigumu kubanga tubwo ino kugenda mu mawulire no ranga tubonyo yokona then emoto kana jireta ne tujinspectinga then no swearing affidavit yes mwe mara kuswearing affidavit with a competent lawyer Mm. Yes no funa notice of motion and no processing a court order. Mm. Ate court order gwa gwa ba jifuna. Na yebo mara kufuna court order yo mo submitting the QRA. Mm. Na fetu watu ino kola chi okujiverify. Kwanga tunange nasa yajja. Eh mm. watu bagende nasa ne bakola chi. Mm. Ne nasa ne bajje ne bajje ro kuku. Kinjango manyo muntu akolya nasa na kolya na ogu. If iri ko rujuno kusinga neno. Yes. So tu watu ino kola chi kubatu ino okujizayo mm. kusatifyinga gamba court etulage yes ino court court order fa ba kozechi fa ba juwa dono msaja mm. mtufu mm. era kozese ino court order ochuse ino motoka kuteke manyago so we malo ko sa court order kuteka manyago then no leo kano validatinga era na yetu jaku tuja kufuna third party nga tuna ba kuvalidatinga process era mpango so i think the better option i think is to for someone to actually get it and then validate, validate it. Yes. You validate you write the, the what is available in the old dog book mm. and then you put it on the system yes. okay and then you are able to actually yes. use yes. your money back. Uh, someone would like to know what are some of the benefits of this validation process. Now the benefits of validation process uh, we ease of services like transfers. Okay? Yes, now when the vehicle is online it is very easy to transfer and it is very easy even to track the registered owner in case he cannot be found because what we do you visit us at URA, we shall yeah. check using the team okay of the the team in that motor vehicle the vehicle yes the, we get the contact of the person we raise him a responsible ugandan uh, after raising him and knowing that he has a vehicle in his account but he's not in possession of that vehicle he will definitely help you to transfer you see yes. it becomes very easy alterations you are in control Yes, you are in control of your vehicle. You alter the engine, you change the engine. Mm. The moment you change the engine, you don't need to go call someone, consult who. No, 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 no. All you need mm. is the proper documentation of that engine. Okay. Then you go, you log into your TIN account, motor vehicle details, change. You alter. Yes, after you've altered, then you, uh, of course, after we have inspect, inspected, eh, we approve. That is very easy for you. Duplicate number plates. Katugobo in your logbook. Mm. Nena mba ne kubuka ko tosobola kufuna namba. Aisho. Yes, tosobola kufuna namba. Ngo ina ngo ina logbook wetu tosobola kufuna namba. So you have to do what? You have to first it must be validated first. Then you process your what? Your your logbook. So the whole <coughs> password to this all problem yes. is yes. validation. It is validation. 
get the details, mm. capture them in a system, and then you, 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 you are good to go. I, 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 then there is a this logbook. We can't give you a photo. We can't give you a, a reprint in case you lose it. Yes, you can't. So we have to do what if it is online, it's very easy. We shall reprint for you a copy, and you are good to go. Now, uh, another advantage is uh, correcting errors. But right. eh, yes. yes. But I think people were a bit reluctant mm. because there are cases, a few cases we handle there. You find the vehicle was registered with the issues like in the chassis. Yes, in the chassis. Okay. Eh, someone tells you, you see, me, I've never altered my chassis. I've never touched and changed these chassis. You get. He even mm. has pictures. You bring the vehicle at a licensing for inspection. You check and see really the the vehicle was not altered. It was not changed, the chassis was not changed. So at that moment, when we are doing validation, we, that's when we collect the errors. Yes, we put in the right information so that when you are driving your vehicle, you are safe. You even feel comfortable when you are on the road and the police stops you, say, ah, ah, I can start, you know, all my facts are okay. Yeah. The next is, a, of course, crimes of forgery. Okay. This, yes, when the vehicle is not online, it is very easy to forge these logbooks. Yes, you've had people who go and uh, I, I present to you this logo. I say, uh, uh, this vehicle, I can write here my name. I put my team. I say, no, no, the vehicle is registered in my names. Mm. I, I give you. Yes, I, or you go to the, to uh, a, fi a finance institution. Uh, this, like money lenders, say, uh, uh, this is my logbook. Then I'm there, I see some a client is there. They are arresting him. But the vehicle is, is that person's vehicle. Like, you know, because when you're on the old system, forgeries are many. Yes. When it is in our system, very easy. Just go, click in our e-tax, I check the vehicle details, I show you uh, this vehicle is in terms of uh, Mr. Robert. So this is Robert, deal with Robert. Now David is not the right person, deal with Robert. Yes, we shall have, uh, it is easy to extract data. Yes, yes, yes it is as extraction of data. <coughs> like I told you, uh, online, it's just a click of a button. button. Yes. You get all the information you need. The profile is there, readily available for you. Yes. So it, then getting now files because in going in registry, you <laughs> we have to go in how many files? And how many millions that of we records. have COVID. Yeah, exactly. You know? The movements are limited, uh, yeah. and uh, you cannot actually just go to any place, anyhow. Mm. Sometimes some places are restricted, meaning that they would like to deal with you online. Exactly. So I think uh, the world the out there has to embrace online services. Exactly. Even right now we're online, and <laughs> we are being watched by more than uh, 500 people, right? I, I, I guess, I can, yeah, I so can, online can, services are actually very, very important. Mm. I talk about uh, the, the uh, decentralization of services, and also mm. the fact that when you validate your vehicle, uh, and uh, maybe you need uh, uh, you need insurance to compensate you in case of road accidents. Uh, are they uh, also part of the advantages of uh, validation? Definitely, because if it's not on, if it's not in, uh, in the white logbook or if it's not in our system, it is very hard. How will those how will the insurance company detect that the vehicle is registered in your names for it to be? Actually, they don't even insure. They will tell you we need the vehicle now uh, in an online. We checked with URA. We are not seeing the vehicle is not in your names. Hey, but when it is in your white log, then definitely it is in, uh, in your names. Now, decentralization of services, uh, after you have validated, you know validation takes place at headquarters service office, or what we call motor vehicle licensing only. Yes, that's where it takes place. So imagine only at, it is at, at, at headquarters service office. So when you validate this vehicle, it eases work now to be distributed across the country for all your uh, offices. Because once the vehicle is online, then you can process a, a duplicate number plates from wherever you are, from Tororo, from Jinja, from Mbari. Those offices approve duplicate number plates. They approve transfers of motorcycles. They approve uh, alterations. Yes, but when the book is in green, Nakawa, licensing, which is very hard. Yes, I think uh, the public out there is mm -hmm. benefiting actually, and. Um, uh, of course, when you look at this validation bit, uh, ladies and gentlemen out there, mm. uh, do not uh, put your confidence in the green logbook or in the pink logbook. Mm. Do not put your confidence in the green logbook. Because I have seen scenarios where you have these logbooks and they are like four logbooks against one motor vehicle. Okay? 
what you need to do is to trust the system. Don't mind about the paper quality because uh, uh, this, the vehicle that we are talking about in question is on the system. You can trust the system more than the physical logbook. So do not worry about the white, okay? Don't worry about the white logbook. Uh, because the white logbook is just evidence to you, but the vehicle is in the system. Meaning that you can actually transact properly when the vehicle is in the system. Meaning that if the vehicle is not in the system, there are many things that you actually be losing if the vehicle is not in the system, like uh, Ediga was, uh, was uh, illustrating. So put your confidence. Of course, people will say that this uh, uh, validation bit, uh, government wants to collect money, yes. It is also part of it because uh, we are a tax collecting agency mm -hmm. that collects tax on behalf of government and uh, which tax of course facilitates your provision of the public. Of course, good. removing our country from the economic slavery. Exactly. Yes. So, uh, Edgar, talk about, uh, okay, I think you mentioned this. Mm -hmm. What do I need to validate? Uh, just hey. quickly, what do I need to validate? What you need to validate? First and foremost, you must have a TIN and password and the vehicle must be in your names. Uh, when you, on that green logbook, the vehicle must you, you must be the registered person in that green logbook. Then you have a TIN and password, login, uh, you have the details of the motor vehicle, and then the particulars. And then that is the number plate, and then uh, the type of application, serial numbers, and that. Then you immediately validate. And it is free, by the way. It is free. Oh, yes, validation is very free. You don't do what? You don't pay for it. You, you don't even need to come to licensing. You just, from the comfort of wherever you are seated, you are home, you can, as long as you have your registration book, that green logbook, you apply for validation, and then we shall handle. We do, actually, we, we've been doing it in uh, uh, two to three working days, but now adding in COVID, and then making, uh, uh, making sure that everyone uh, applies for validation, uh, removing services of insurance with a green logbook. Now work has increased, it has become too much because uh, everyone now is uh, fighting to validate their vehicle. We now do five working days. Okay. Yes. And uh, after validation in the event that uh, this vehicle has to be transferred, uh, yes, yes, how yes. do I do it? Uh, mm -hmm. Quickly before we, mm -hmm. we, we delve into now the, mm -hmm. the tax element of... Uh, yes. This. Now what happens after you have validated, uh, and you want, to, uh, you want to transfer, then very easy. Log in your team, uh, you are the seller or the, the transferer, uh, normally team, password, then transfer your vehicle. Yes, then the process is it is flowing. Even in our system, it is very easy. As long as you log in your team with your password, go to motor vehicle registration, application, change of ownership, then input the number. Do not skip any space like how people do. Input the number and then you will reach a page where they request you to put input the TIN of the current buyer or the transferee. Yes. Do that. Uh, submit. Yes, the prescribed fees will come with the forms, print them. After you have printed, then pay the prescribed fees. If you are the, if the, the transferer is a, an individual, and then the transfer is an individual, countersign on the forms, attach valid copies of your IDs, and submit at licensing. We are planning to put the, the system online, okay. but even those documents, because COVID has taught us a lot. That, that documentation can be scanned online, sent to URA, then we work on it even without visiting us. Okay. Yes, that comes. So that basically is the transfer. That's, that's the transfer. And you see, uh, yeah. I think it comes with a lot of convenience. Yes. Because uh, it is just a mere click. It's a mere click. Click, mm. enter, mm. click, mm. Uh, enter, enter the team, the, the team. team. Mm. because I think when you enter the team, basically, mm. you, 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 you are saying that uh, when you enter the team, mm. you actually say that uh, you, you, the details on your team will be actually auto populated. Auto -populated. Then you enter the team of the person buying, auto the details are auto populated. When the vehicle is on the system, you enter the you number of it, the, uh, everything is auto populated. Then you're able to actually uh, do the transfer. Exactly. I think it is very easy actually to do this thing when you are actually. Very, very, very easy. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. And how about if um, mm -hmm. they, uh, there is the, the one supposed to transfer to me is not present? 
He's absent. I'm, I mean, I've looked for him. I can't see him. Maybe see. I don't know. Yes. How how is that? Now, uh, yeah, when uh, when the transfer, actually, the one we supposed to transfer to is the transfer. Uh, people call them sellers, but you know, uh, the transfer mm-hmm. of a motor vehicle does not necessarily mean it is selling. I can be giving a, a vehicle to my wife, so I'm the transferer. She's a transferee. Yes. Yes. So uh, what you need, uh, if that person is not available then we do what we call a court order process, court order transfer process, okay. yes. The court order tr- transfer process, you, you advertise in the newspapers. Okay. Yes, because uh, imagine I'm the transfer, the absentee transferer, mm. you will advertise in newspapers. Uh, is, they indicate it, Edgar, report to your aid transfer motor vehicle, UBB 001A. Mm. That is in the newspapers. Then uh, the advert must run for 14 working days. 14 yeah. working days. Yeah. Very 14 important. days, 14 days. We move 14 days. Yeah. Yeah. 14 days. Like uh, two, two weeks. Days. Uh, two weeks. Okay. Two weeks, yes, two weeks. 14 days. Now, 14 days, we expect Edgar, wherever he is, at least to have landed on that newspaper and seen. And if he is a really Ugandan, then he acts like he acts properly, he comes and transfers the vehicle. But in, on the occasion that he is not showing up, you own, all you need is a. Uh, oh, you continue with the process. Uh, are you in possession of the motor vehicle? If you are in possession of the motor vehicle, take it to any nearest URA office for inspection because we must confirm what you need to transfer into your names is actually with you. Yes, it is with you. So uh, you're doing inspection, after you've done inspection, then uh, get a competent lawyer to process for you a statutory declaration. In a statutory declaration, you narrate what happened. Mm. Yes, what is your, uh, what happened? Why? Why are you doing this? Yes, you swear, no, I'm a male, female, male or female. You, I bought this motor vehicle from Edgar. Uh, now it is three years down the road. I've tried to trace Edgar, he cannot be seen. So I ask court to grant me the transfer of this vehicle to my names. Oh. Yes. So that means for the absentee transfer, yes. the onus is on the court to the actually court. prove to URA that this person is unavailable. Exactly. Such that URA can also shield itself. Because yes, yes. you may actually transfer someone's so vehicle and the next, story. Yeah, that's <laughs> the next day they come to you mm-hmm. and they hang your head. Exactly. They hang your beard. So a court, 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 court has to order us. Yes. yes, God has to order us True. to transfer. So uh, after that, you pay stamp duty okay. on, on that, because uh, for it to be legally binding, of course, must pay stamp duty on the statutory declaration. Then they will move the motion, the normal court order, and issue a court order. Okay. Yes, to URA. Okay. Now, uh, upon issuance of that court order, you will come to us. We shall also do what we call a physical identification. Mm-hmm. Of course, a chat. Yeah, you know when you call it physical identification, it seems to be very technical. It's just like a chat. A chat. Yes, you just tell because me I want to do. prove to you. You see, even when yesterday I went to the passport office mm. to renew my passport, mm. I mean someone does a, some bit of verification. Mm. Who are you? You know, so that you get to know. You get to know. Yeah, that this is yeah. actually that. exactly. You know, when okay. you chat with someone, you tell you, you know, uh, in in four years I bought this vehicle. Edgar was my friend, but you know he went back to Kenya. Why he did what? Uh, why he shifted? I do not so. As the person, the officer in licensing is recording. Okay. Yes. Afterwards, you countersign where you stay for in case of any clarification or inquiry, yet to contact you. Then, when we do that physical identification, we shall give you what we call form three. Form, form three. three. That is a, 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 a manual transfer. I have a form three here, which I would love to show to people. Yes. A manual transfer. A, 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 okay. A transfer form that is done out of what of. A, when the person is not available. Okay. This is it. It has particulars, yes. licensing agreement, mm. I, we, mm. mm. uh, which district you're coming from. These are normal things that yes. we feel every yes. day. Yes. Actually, yes. what you yes. feel in this form is what uh, the partic- your particulars okay. the person gave. Because also we need to see something that we uh, need to, to show that uh, the vehicle is the person where it is going. Okay. Yes, so you put in your particulars, the details of the motor vehicle, you fill that form. Mm. Then now we shall we get a copy of the court order. Mm. Someone from Ligo has to take that court order. We have relations with courts in Uganda. Okay. Yes, mm. so someone from Ligo has to take the court order to court for certification. Yes, to confirm that yes, this court this court order originates from here. They yes. certify. 
it looks like a kind of lengthy, I think by <coughs> explanation, but uh, mm. averagely, how many days does this take? We, we give four weeks. Four we give four weeks, yeah. Four. To do the whole process, because it's two weeks of the advert. The advert, yes. yes. the advert, because it's the advert. And you're calling on the owner of a certain motor vehicle, who oh, you are not. Because mm. they might have sold it to you, mm. you are aware they went out of the country, mm. but when you place this advert, yes. actually they come. Somebody tell you, yeah, mm. they even call, they call. Someone the other day came to licensing, I uh, was called with the advert, I was called to transfer this motor vehicle. Okay. So we helped to, to look for the current person. Okay. We initiated the transfer, and the guy, did, the person did not need to go to through court. Okay. It was initiated for, and we transferred the vehicle. Edgar, I have some questions. There is a question from Timothy. Mm. Timothy Mugeni. He's asking, mm. what can what can one do, mm. okay, mm. Uh, if they want to retain the old number plate? You know these number plates, the historicals that I talked about, yes, UDP, yes, 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 yes. Uh, 950, the big number plates. Uh, mm. Someone is asking, what can someone do? retain the old number plates. Do we still issue this? <laughs> That's a good one. I, I'm also in love with those old number plates because we realize when people people who prestige. have those old years prestige. I have an uncle with that UX G Mercedes Benz. Uh, I love I love it when I look at it and he has maintained it properly. So uh, there are even groups where you find classic classic motor vehicles. Okay. They have only those vehicles. Now what we do uh, if you've maintained your vehicle and you, you you are not hoping to transfer we're not hoping to to alter anything then you can have it but you are advised to do what we call re-registration 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 registering again yes re-register because okay. now what we have we you register from the six digit or the old number that key big number okay. to the seven digit the current ones the one that strokes. Uh, the one that strokes, yes. The one that strokes. So UBH 001A. Yes, okay. that's what happens. Uh, when you do registration, then you are able also to, to assess other services. Transfers, alterations, duplicate number plates. Because that number cannot be printed even by our manufacturers in case you lose it. Exactly. Uh, and this is, very, this is very common. Someone might say, oh, this man is so prestigious with this vehicle. Exactly. He gets off one of the he gets number plates. You numbers. can't actually. Exactly. You cannot, you cannot yeah. replace that number plate. Okay. So you have to apply for registration. When you apply for registration, the requirements, of course. The requirements, we need you to bring the vehicle for inspection. Okay. Yes. Now, our inspection for this motor vehicle, we need to confirm that, yes, this vehicle moves. <laughs> yes, this vehicle is on there because uh, they are old vehicles. They are legend, legendary vehicles. Yes, we don't expect it to come on a carrier. It needs to come, uh, you have to come driving it. Yes, okay. and it must be in a good shape because we're going to issue it a running number. We're going to issue it a UBHG. So it must be yeah, in a good shape for it to be issued that. Yeah, we have to confirm that yes, this, this vehicle did not come on a carrier. The owner came driving it to our premises, we inspected it, and then we are able to process. It is only inspection, then you will surrender the other number plates. We request you to surrender the other number plates. Yes, then we approve. The prescribed fees, in most cases, it, it comes with the application form, but it is 223,000. 223,000. To re-register. Re okay. Then buying the number from the manufacturer, who is Tampeco or ABC, it is 137,000. Okay. Uganda so that is the total of uh, two, two. You said one two, two, three. Three. Yeah. Two, 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 three. two, two, three. Simple calculation. You can mm. add that for yourself, and mm. no, mm. especially uh, if you have interest. Uh, there is a uh, Philip. Mm. Philip is saying that people have SSD. You know these uh, hey, Southern Sudan and uh, uh, Tanzanian cars packed in their fences. Mm. He's saying, why don't you work out mm. a system to enable them mm. register? Those cars, mm. now of course, after paying your tax, <laughs> as opposed to making them pay mm. monthly fees mm. and asking them to drive back to normally every month, every month uh, and also hunting them down. You know, it, it is a common phenomenon now. People yeah. are having talk about those uh, with those SSD. number plates and what is SSD. Mm. And now, what happens with the SSD? Uh, that vehicle is not our vehicle. Because our mm. numbers, it is U, uh, it is UG, uh, UBA, UBB. You U can't even talk about the UAs. A U A A. The U A A. Now, what happens with the SSD? Yes. You are supposed to declare that vehicle for registration. Okay. That is at customs. Yes. And depending on the number of years the vehicle has been in this country, yes, because we have a time limit. Uh, 
if it is older than 15 years, you cannot register it here because you know we register now uh, a bit new vehicles, eh? 15 yes. years and, uh, yes. and younger. Yes, if it is above 15 years, you don't register it here. Then if it is within the 15 years, then you declare at customs. You All you need is, is to appoint a registered clearing agent. Okay. And it is clear, a registered clearing agent, because we register with, with a, an agent we are not aware of, then you have you have issues. So when you register with a registered, uh, when you appoint a registered clearing agent, they will help you to register that motor vehicle by capturing for you entries to pay taxes for the vehicle. Yes, it must pay cost some taxes. It pays taxes actually. Okay. Uh, I think four years and above. Uh, four years and above. That's when they can apply in like a depreciation. Okay. But uh, when it is uh, below, of which most of them are below, you declare like a new import. So he's saying that why don't you go to their fences, to to their premises to, to actually do it to do registration. And, yes, okay. to do registration and also to facilitate them with because I think they know mm. that when they drive them out, mm. definitely a certain enforcement officer is waiting. But now what happens uh, if it is within the law? Because when you imp- when you bring that vehicle or you come with that vehicle in the country, uh, you have documentation for that motor vehicle, and I know they pay temporary road user, of course. and you have a, a period in which you are supposed to pay that temporary road user. Yes. So if you, you are within the period, why fear to move out with your vehicle? Yes, if you are within the period, you cannot fear to move out with the vehicle. Actually, the issue that we had was uh, uh, COVID times, eh? mm. yeah, because the vehicles were not allowed to move. Mm-hmm. But I think uh, customs also handled that properly, because uh, they are human. Yeah, you might tell me, you know, after the lock- lockdown, I couldn't move back to the a point of entry where I came in, which I used to come in. So that's the reason for the extension. Yes, uh, they understood. So uh, if you are within the law, definitely we shall not. They cannot impound like, the, your vehicle. Yes. So my colleague Philip, what you need to do, get the vehicle, come to Nakawa, exactly. let it be assessed, yes, okay? be assessed, pay the taxes because you're tired of using the SSD yes, number yes. because of the inconvenience that is involved in going back and uh, the payment of uh, the road user charges mm-hmm. that we have charged. Of course it is not you going to register. So we advise you to actually make your way to Nakawa and then be able to be assisted to, to change uh, to re-register, to just to re-register the vehicle into the Uganda the number plate, and yeah. then you're free to, to drive. I know most of these are high-powered vehicles. Hey, they are they're high-end smart. vehicles. They are big, big, big machines. Eh? But uh, hey, he has to appoint a registered yeah, clearing, clearing agent. agent. Yes. And the list of the registered clearing agents is, is also portal. available on the URA web portal. Uh, mm-hmm. Maurice Taremwa is asking, uh, can I apply for such and such station by email? And which email address? And of course, uh, He's saying that can I make a payment on such and certification by visa? Yes, such and certification. Such and certification. Uh, the moment you are you are you are assessed for such and certification, it is, you can use any mode of payment. You can use mobile money, visa. You use the bank. You use a uh, payway. You can use any mode of payment. Now, uh, on getting uh, such and certification online, uh, you can request for such. You can apply for such and certification online then you are issued an assessment yes now when you send to e-services at ura.go.ug definitely that mail will be allocated will be sent to the right office which is hso then okay. we shall assess you and then uh, after we've assessed you then we look for you we get you the details so they write to services yes services, services at ura.go.ug okay. .go.ug yes then it will be channeled to the respective will, office mm, hso for process and then okay yes. um <coughs> someone is asking dr raymond actually dr mm-hmm. raymond biaranga is asking mm-hmm. uh if i need a logbook mm-hmm. and i use the tin okay but when I changed, when it changed, I did not get a logbook. Okay, he mm-hmm. used uh, he used I think uh, a tin to to apply for a logbook, but he didn't get it. A how tin. how do we go about it? He says mm-hmm. if I need a logbook, okay, mm-hmm. and he used his tin, okay. Mm-hmm. How how do you go about it if the tin if he used the tin mm-hmm. and he changed it. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm kind of also yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting. I'm trying to get the issue. But in case he logged into his team to print his logbook and he failed. Okay. Yes. Uh, now. That is what we want. Yes. You have to two two times. You are granted two times to print your logbook. Yes. Now, on the occasion that you have uh, you have uh, exhausted the number of times to print your logbook, you can visit any URA office. 
for what? For to assist you print for you your logbook. Actually, uh, m- members, uh, uh, actually those people who are out there watching uh, mm-hmm. this, uh, just know that our toll-free helplines are functional because uh, some of these things you may find that by just calling you'll be able to be assisted. Our call center has been beefed up yes. with very many staff to be able to assist you. So you can call our toll-free helpline at 0800 217 or 0800 117 You can get to us, you can use even our online platforms that are available, you can write to services, and then you're able to be assisted because some of these things you may not need to move. He was also uh, asking about, um, uh, he joined I think late and uh, we had already gone through the validation, mm-hmm. but uh, Dr. Just a small recap of validation, you go, if you have a functional email address, okay, you log in uh, using your TIN and password that you will have created, or if the password that you have, and then on the, this is the left hand side, yes, okay? left, you will go to motor vehicle details and then you follow the prompts, there is a validation mm-hmm. there. And validation basically you get the items as they are in the old logbook. You add motor vehicle details. Add motor vehicle details, yes. Fit them in and then you're able to validate your motor vehicle. Of course they'll come to URA. The process is these details that you fill in come to URA and the officer picks the physical file and verifies the information you have put in against what is available on file. And then they are able to generate for you a new Look. Okay. Uh, Daniel Bayanga, when you validate a car with bigger number plates, mm. does it change to the new series mm. or you retain your oh, original number? That's a good one. I was imagining yes. what we might have left out. Now, when you validate the a vehicle with the big numbers, the six digit numbers, uh, you are advised to apply for re registration. Yes, upon approval of, the, of your validation application, uh, we advise you to apply for re-registration. The first step, you've put your vehicle online, yes, now you can do anything using that motor vehicle because you've already validated it. So you apply for re-registration. Where I told you, you will pay 223000 uh, the inspection, well, actually even you will have done the inspection. So we shall use the copy because when we do inspection, we give you two copies: the white copy and the pink, the duplicate copy. Okay. So uh, on that application, we attach a duplicate copy. We shall not request you to come back at, at for for inspection because you inspect the data transfer. Okay. Yes. Uh, Julius <coughs> Mulin, of course, I already explained what validation means mm-hmm. because we wanted to know what it is mm-hmm. and how frequently it is done once. <laughs> this validation is done once to capture the details of the old logbook into the new logbook. And of course, after capturing, you show you even get prompts. When someone wants to transact with your vehicle, mm-hmm. they want to endorse a third party interest. All these things are not possible because you are in charge of your vehicle. However, and this is uh, very important, please do not share your TIN and password. That is because it. when you do it, Someone can go to the motor vehicle details and transfer this vehicle to themselves. Yes, yes, yes. So yes, please yes. do not share mm. your TIN and password. That's why you see with URA every after given period, because people, people complain that uh, every after like 45 days, URA changes the password or prompts you to, to, change. to change the password. It is done for your own safety because we know you might have appointed an agent, you might have given someone, you might have shared your TIN and password, you might not have shared it but someone landed it when Actually, you were always have issues so. like uh, uh, when you have a husband and wife if, if they get issues in the middle there they find your husband knows your password your teen uh, has a copy has accessibility to a copy of your id they can log in and transfer and those are some of the few cases we handle at licensing of course and mm. and that will be very deadly yeah. okay and yeah. now um keep your questions coming in uh we, we shall be responding to them as they come in uh let's uh, uh delve into this issue of uh, the advanced tax yes, because uh, tax. well yes there are people who are operating commercial vehicles vehicles where they earn money from you find someone they have a lorry maybe it carries wood they have a uh, elf we have a special kind of 
tax that is placed on you because, of course, under the income tax law, everyone who earns income is yes. subject to tax on the income. So, Edgar, please take us through uh, what this advanced income tax means and probably who pays it and what form of tax it is. Tax yes. It is yes. Now, advanced income tax, Mufunza uh, Funzi, advanced income tax, uh, it is a normal tax. It's our normal income tax because the income tax act does not define advanced tax. However, one of the rules of interpreting uh, the act, known as the literal rule, eh, okay. it says that the words should be uh, they should be given their their meaning, their literal meaning. Eh. Uh, borrowing from one of the dictionary uh, meanings, the word advance means uh, to do, send, or supply before beforehand. That's okay. the ad ad advance, and the tax is a technical term. It find in the in our income tax act. Uh, it said any tax imposed under the income tax act that is it yes that is any tax, tax. Yeah, any tax. Under yes the income tax act. Mm. now what happens yeah. who pays this advance tax or uh, the person who pays that advance tax this advance tax is charged on a person operating uh, with the, the commercial vehicles or passenger service vehicles. Now these commercial vehicles, not each and every commercial vehicle does pays advance tax. Okay. Yes, they are commercial vehicles with two tons and above. Two, two tons, tons and, and above. above, yes. So, Exactly. Okay. Then the PSVs, that is uh, what we call uh, uh, passenger service vehicles. And all these terms, by the way, they are in uh, for motor vehicles, they are in our Traffic Road and Safety Act of 1998. Okay. They define for you what a commercial vehicle is and uh, what a uh, a passenger service vehicle is okay. yes that's what happens so uh, the uh, we are saying who pays the advance income tax mm -hmm. it is a taxpayer <laughs> a taxpayer who owns commercial vehicles you know it is a definition because uh, I, I receive issues my me I paid my vehicle paid advanced income tax now tomorrow uh, I have sold it within this period, within this financial year. I have sold it to this person. Now this person comes, he does not want to pay advance income tax because he says the vehicle has already paid advance income tax for this year. No, I want to collect it from here. Advance tax is paid by a taxpayer and the taxpayer is not a car. A taxpayer is an individual. Uh, yes, we have. <laughs> I, I, I need to I, I need to correct this because yes. uh, it, it becomes a bit tricky when you are explaining to uh, to to clients. Because eh? a taxpayer who provides a passenger transport service or a freight transport service where the goods vehicle used has a loading capacity uh, of at least two tons shall pay an advance tax at the rate specified in part three of the second schedule of course that is our in, in our income tax now uh, i want to give us the the definition of a, a goods vehicle yes yes because it's important to note these technicalities a goods vehicle it means a heavy motor car which is constructed or adapted for use in the conveyance of goods of or burden of any description yes conveyance of goods uh, of burden of any description yeah, that is a that is a goods vehicle. Now, uh, then a passenger service vehicle. It is a vehicle that is constructed or adapted solely for the carriage of passengers and their effects, and includes dual purpose vehicle. What these buses, mini buses, all of those. Now, uh, the issue I we get on advance income tax is okay. It is charged on a taxpayer. Yes, a taxpayer who is a person. Hmm? A taxpayer who is a person. A taxpayer who is a. a uh, an individual. Now, something I want to, to bring to attention, they, we confuse the loading capacity. So you don't know whether the loading capacity is carrying, it is pulling. You, uh, people suggest, no, 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 it should be a trailer. Me, I own tractor heads. My tractor head does not do what? It carry. does not carry. But you know, uh, <laughs> between me and you, I can own tractor heads you own trailers right yes yes uh, when i get i get business 
I will come and do it. I tell you, Robert, uh, I have business here. I need two of your trailers to pull to Mombasa or to pull to Kisoro. I have goods that I have a business. Yes, uh, definitely I have to pay you. Yes, I have to pay you. And I will pay you according to your rates. So, and uh, that advance tax is charged on someone who has chargeable income. That income you have earned on the operation or usage of that motor vehicle is what you are supposed to do what? Is what you are supposed to declare on, on the advance tax, of course, as per the, per the tonnage. So, on the loading capacity, uh, we consider it as the maximum weight of goods declared permissible by the competent authority of the count of the registration of the motor vehicle. Break it down a bit. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the maximum weight of goods declared permissible. Now, the goods, the maximum weight, it, like I told you, it is not carrying or pulling. So it can be both. So the head pulls. The head pulls, yes. Okay. It, it pulls weight. Mm -hmm. So how many tons is it, able to, is it able to pull? And you see, it pulls as per their, their, their specifications. A Mercedes cannot pull what a Subaru will pull. That, yes, that yes. tractor head. It cannot pull what a Premier will pull. So we must consider the consider the tonnage. We must consider the the capacity, the engine capacity. Yes, a two thousand cc cannot carry that ten thousand one one ten eleven thousand nine hundred and forty forty five. You, you, you get. Uh, we must consider the tires. If you are standing on one leg, uh, you cannot carry things a person carries a, a person with two legs standing on two legs can carry. True. Uh, between me and yes, that's what happens. So we must also uh, put in uh, in our minds the number of tires. Okay. The vehicle has that commercial vehicle has. Now, the number after the number, what size? Because you might have ten tires of a motorcycle. Yes, and then you have uh, three tires of uh, a tractor head. Yes, that matters so much. Because uh, if you see the size of those tractor heads, they are big sizes. Yes. So we also consider that the axles. The number of axles. Maguru kumi. Magurana. Maguru mukaga. Yes. Maguru mukaga. Magurana. Maguru kumi. That is important to also know the number of axles. Because axles are the, these linking joints eh, yes. to the tires. Eh? Yes. A two axle and a three axle. They can't carry the same. True. Yes. Now there is what we, when people import these vehicles in, uh, in Uganda, depending on what you want to use the vehicle for. Mm. Uh, yeah, those which come as trucks, uh, then others build them. Yes. There is a reason, of course, as why you are building the vehicle. You cannot tell me a, a built vehicle, it has come with a. Uh, I can say, let me do, let me use this. Sorry. Let me use. I cannot demonstrate properly. I can't demonstrate. Let me use a. Uh, uh, Okay, you, we know we all know how trucks are. Then someone builds a body on it. Mm -hmm. You cannot tell me a built box body or a built vehicle with a box body carries the same the, the same goods as the disc truck. Yes. Yes. You you will see them for sand. They have added extensions. Yes. Or for cows, they have added what? Uh, yes, they have added yes. the body. Yes. yes. So we also need to consider the body of the what? The body the of vehicle. the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is one. So uh, all that combined, we, we get the tonnage, yes, okay. the tonnage of the vehicle. Uh, and when you have issues, then we will we, we commend you to visit the way bridge, the Yunla way bridge, okay. or uh, even ICD. can refer you to ICD to do, uh, to do a way bridge, the way for you, then we give you the advance tax as per the tonnage from the way bridge report. Actually, a new definition I had of a very interesting word, mm. permissible. Permissible. Those things that are permitted. Yes, yes, they, they are permitted. Toilet, notika akabino. Notika akabino. That is not permissible. Exactly. What is permissible is what is acceptable. What is acceptable. On the road. On the road. Oh, okay. That is it. Now, uh, go, each turn is 50,000 from the schedule. Eh? The okay. Each turn is 50,000 for that. But we charge from two turns and above. Okay. So the ones with the uh, less tons, we do not charge them. So if rate. my vehicle is say, seven tons, what uh, is the tax there? Uh, seven tons times th th fifty thousand. That is three hundred and fifty. So that means mm. to get you proper, mm. uh, the tons from which mm. vehicles are supposed to 
the charged advance tax mm. is supposed to be two. It's supposed to be two. Like if my vehicle is less than two tons, after considering mm. all these uh, conditions, you said the mm. size, mm. the number, the what, uh, but my vehicle is below two tons, it is not taxed. It, it is kind of exempted. Exactly. But if it is above two, two tons, two tons and capacity, above. Yes. I get the total number of tons this vehicle carries times fifty thousand. Yes. Because each ton is yeah, fifty thousand shillings. Yes. So if a vehicle is maybe ten tons, you mm. get ten mm. times fifty thousand. This is uh, five hundred thousand. Yes. Yes. Is yes. this uh, declared for annual? Is it uh, an annual tax? Yes. Now year? that is uh, declared every financial year. Okay. Uh, every financial year. Now what I need uh, I need us to understand, or I need the public to understand, mm -hmm. uh, like. Uh, I had communicated earlier. When I sell this vehicle into uh, to you, okay. when I sell this commercial vehicle to you, it has changed ownership because the period it had paid was it was paid by a taxpayer who is me, okay. or if it is under the name the company names that company paid for that for operations of that motor vehicle. Okay. Right mm -hmm. now, I have switched or changed names into your names now. Okay have ownership now we count the vehicle like you have it is your first time of usage okay. of that motor vehicle mm -hmm. so you are going now the operations the benefits of that motor vehicle are with you so you have to pay yes because the taxpayer who is a person or an individual you know those provident funds uh, how the 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 a person is is a, is defined in the income tax act eh? okay. yes it is a, a not a car so you will be required also to pay. Okay. Yes. What's a person? Includes an individual, mm. a company, mm. a subdivision of government. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. The legal entities. The legal entities. You can call them personal. Exactly. Mm. Uh, how about a passenger vehicle? Uh -huh. Now, a passenger service vehicle, uh, the minibuses of this Uganda, the matatus, so they call, uh, if you meet the Kenyans, they call them matatus. Then the, the central, call them chigege. chigege. Yes, the chigege. Chigege, now... Now what happens on the, on the minibuses or chigege, the normal chigege, uh, they are charged as per the seating capacity. Seating capacity. Seating capacity. Okay. The challenge we had uh, is people importing them into the country, and then they are not, they do not alter. You remember when I told you uh, this? You the and put in the seats. Uh, put in the seats in the system. Okay. Yes. Someone imports the vehicle. He drives it as long as he's, he has ownership. He has possession of the vehicle with the key. He drives, takes his passengers, he gets money, but he has never declared the vehicle for alteration. His logbook or registration book still reads the a van, still reads what? It still reads a van, it still reads three seats, it still reads it as a commercial vehicle. Yeah, such people are encouraged to first alter. You're supposed to alter, you alter the van. I can, I can give you a small illustration of altering a, a van because it's the major business we have here in Uganda okay. for, for minibus business. Or what happens? You alter the van. You add in the seats. When you add in the seats, definitely the, the uh, gross weight will change because mm -hmm. the the weight to weight at the beginning is now it has increased. So then the gross weight will increase. Mm -hmm. Now the number of people that were sitting on three on three seats that came in, now it is uh, fourteen. It is fourteen. Yes, the body description changes from van seats to be a van to a minibus. Uh, now we have categories, tax category of the different motor vehicles on mm -hmm. the roads. Mm -hmm. uh, we have number one, which is our saloon, number two, motorcycles, number three, uh, commercial vehicles, number four, minibuses. So the tax category, it came as three for a commercial vehicle, but now it has to change to four. Mm -hmm. So when it changes to four, then it goes to the category of minibuses, omnibuses, and that. Then the fees classification also has to change. Mm -hmm. Yes, the fees classification goes hand in hand with the uh, tax category. It also changed to four. Now, uh, each altered part is 20,000 Uganda shillings. So each seat is 20,000? I mean now on, on alteration. Oh, on you're alteration. Still on alteration. Yes, I'm, I'm still on alteration. So each, each part, part that I alter? Exactly. 
So if I have 10 seats, does it mean that that is... Uh, you, in there, you've only altered one part. You've oh. altered the seating capacity. Okay. Yes. So you are talking about the parts that are in the log. Exactly. The so parts. if I alter the engine, it is twenty thousand. I alter the 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 color 20, because 000. you might find that it came in yellow. Mm. Now I know the road where I drive people. People are supposed in blue. In blue. So I want to change it to blue. That alteration. So mm. alteration of any particular. Any particular on the motor vehicle actually. Mm. It okay. is twenty thousand. Now uh, we alter after we have inspected the vehicle because you must first bring it for inspection for us to view. Okay, to see, because those parts are seen by uh, an individual, me and you. You can see that, yes, this person has added in seats, they were three, now uh, they, are, they are 14. Yes, of course, 14 excluding the driver, because the driver, we consider him as a constant, eh? okay. he drives here, so we, they are 14. So after they have seen, inspection is 12,000 Uganda shillings. Yes, uh, then we have what we call form fees. Which is also 12,000. Form fees was there during the manual manual time. Up to now, finance has not yet removed yeah, because it. Because I'm about to ask you, yes, I mean, I do it online. Uh, do you charge uh, me? Exactly, fees? exactly. It was there, but finance has not removed it from the what? From the from the uh, instructions or the act. So we, we still charge 12,000, which is form fees. Okay. After you've paid that, now your vehicle is a minibus. Now, on paying advance tax, each seat, 20,000. Each seat twenty thousand. So if my, how about if, uh, for example, my seat is supposed to carry fourteen, then I just alter to eight. Hey, if you carry, do I pay? Eight now, times? if you if you alter eight, and you are using it as a taxi, or HGG, yes, yes, you will pay as per the eight. But now we must call, we must do it. We must inspect the vehicle to confirm the seating capacity. Okay. Yes, we must confirm. To there are those even who yes they remove. Then there are uh, uh, the buses like these big buses. Someone owns like a school. He alters the what he yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he adds in the, the seats. So we charge as per as per the seating capacity. Okay. Mm. Um. So that means basically that uh, depending mm. do do motorcycles also pay? Yes, 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 yes. Now motorcycles. Uh, I need to talk about the like issuance of plates. I can give them a, 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 the public a hint. Uh, everyone must be informed that a motorcycle with one number plate should apply for issuance of two plates. Currently? Currently. You should apply for issuance of two plates. Log into your team, go to motor vehicle registration, uh, purpose, select issuance of two plates, input the number of your motorcycle, then uh, we shall, because we need now to differentiate between a PSV and a private motorcycle. Okay. Yes, initially every motorcycle had the same number plate, but now uh, there are motorcycles used for business and then a private, the one you want to drive at home. So they com the PSVs now we issue them with white number plates. Okay. Then the private, we issue them with the the yellow, yellow, yellow with plate. black, eh? the yellow with black number plate. So when you apply for issues of two plates, we shall request you to surrender the one you do what? You have. The one you have. We request you to surrender the one you have so that we'll be able to now classify your motorcycle properly. You know, either it is a, a PSV or a, a right. private, yes. So we give you two numbers and you're good to go. You cannot also now transfer a motorcycle with one number, yes. You can't transform mm -hmm. with one number. So it is also more like, uh, I can't call it validation because there are some which are already online, but if you don't issue for, if you don't apply for issuance of two plates, you cannot get other services. Yes, so it's uh, better you to avoid inconveniences. Yes, you and should. And this happen, and you see border borders, mm. uh, they, they, are, they are culprits, they are victims of very many operations exactly. that happen yeah. around. So exactly. it's very possible your, your motorcycle will be will be taken somewhere and then you need maybe to get it back. Get it back. And then you are requested for, if mm. find has no number, you have process for the number plate, then the, the process becomes a bit What tricky. is with the two numbers? I, what, what, what was the reasoning of uh, the legislators? You see, in, initially a number plate was behind. I think with the Traffic uh, Road and Safety Act, uh, well, uh, okay, with the traffic, the traffic 
rules. Imagine this person has stolen. You know, when the motorcycle is coming from the front, you cannot see that this is the number. You and you know, with our police, we are helped to track using the number plates. Yes, we are even, by the way, going for the, uh, for the system of digital, digitalizing our number plates. Yes, okay. so that the cameras on the streets can track those numbers properly. If this motorcycle has committed a crime, like how some carry, you know, carry, they carry gunmen, 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 gunmen. They carry, yes, yes, yes. So when the other number is in front, you are able to see that this is the motorcycle that has come. Oh, they are okay. not passing for you to see the behind, because it will have left you. You might even find that the behind actually does not yes. have one. Yes. Mm. Mm. Okay. Mm. Um, Okay, uh, I think this is uh, getting very interesting. Yes. I want us to, 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 to also respond to some questions that came in earlier as we were presenting. Okay, okay. Of course, um, there is uh, a one mirror Joseph is saying that um, uh, he wants to know if, uh, when they, if they lose, if I lost my white copy of the logbook, how, I, how do I obtain a duplicate logbook? If how did he, he obtains a, a duplicate logbook? Uh, what happens if the logbook was in his names and it is a white copy? That means it is online. Mm -hmm. You can re you apply for uh, a duplicate book registration book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now that duplicate registration book, of course, we expect you to have reported to police uh, and then advertise that yes, you lost your logbook. Then it is forty-four thousand Uganda shillings. Then after we have approved, after we have approved, he logs back into his team, would be able to print. That's after if he has exhausted all his times, because he has two option, two times, two of, times of, of, printing. of printing. Actually, what I encourage people when you print from your login, you need to save save a copy, save a copy on a desktop or mm. send it to your email, mm. so that it keeps there. In case you lose this one, you can be able to retrieve it. Retrieve it. Yes, that's what happened. But it is forty-four thousand. Uh, Esther uh, Nabaju is asking, she's saying that she has uh, she owns a Matatu, but uh, of course it is the white lock, mm -hmm. but um, she bought it from a second owner mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. who did not transfer. By the way, as a response to, to Esther, I would also like to know from, from you that who has the owner? The owner is on who to, to oh, make the wow, transfer. Wow, 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 wow. Is it on me, the one buying mm -hmm. or the one selling? Who oh, is yes. supposed to transfer and who is supposed to pay the transfer fees before to. we respond to this? Yes, 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 yes. Now, initially, uh, in the Traffic and Road Safety Act of 1998, uh, the owner was on the, on the seller to transfer the vehicle. But now there is an amendment. And uh, by then it was 14 days after I have sold my vehicle to you. Mm. Within 14 days, I should have transferred. The, I should transfer the vehicle to you, into your names. And now uh, we have uh, uh, the onus is on both parties. Oh, yes, the onus is on both parties. You, both of you, yes, you are penalized if oh. you go beyond. Yeah, even the period has been extended to three months. So within three months, you should transfer the vehicle. Both of you should have the vehicle transferred into the. I think the that is very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, you've given them three, three months now. That's what the uh, the law says. Okay. Yes. So Esther is saying that uh, she did not transfer I think because of COVID. Mm -hmm. The second they bought it from a second owner who did not transfer. Mm -hmm. Okay. That means she has a logbook, mm -hmm. but the person appearing in the logbook is, is the, the first, owner first owner who did not transfer to the second owner. Which second owner sold to her and she had not transferred. So she's asking, I mean, how can we assist her? Yes, now Esther, uh, uh, I don't know whether the matter to is, is altered, but it's very simple. Now that's where we use the court order process. Order process. Yes, absentee, absentee transfer. transfer. Okay. Yes, absentee transfer, like I said, you have to advertise in the newspapers. Yes, call that person who is registered in the registration book. The registered owner, um, let's say Edgar. Uh, Edgar, report your uh, transfer motor vehicle, this number. Then you bring the vehicle for inspection. You can take the vehicle for inspection at any nearest URA office of your comfort. Yes, wherever you are, if there is a URA office, go. They will inspect, they will help you inspect the vehicle. Then we process uh, the affidavit, uh, you pay stamp duty for 15,000 to because to make it legally binding to, yes, uh, you process for a court order, okay. then 
uh, we shall invite you to come for physical identification. Still, physical identification, by the way, is done at the nearest URA office. Okay. Any nearest URA office, we do a physical identification. It's an like interview, like a small interview with the officer. Uh, telling us to, know uh, to get to know you, to mm. get to know you, mm. which is a, like a small interview. Then after that, we shall give you a manual, a manual transfer form. We call it Form Three at the at licensing. Uh, to, inspection is twelve thousand. Uh, transfer fees is a one zero four thousand. By the way, the transfer fees I didn't talk about transfer fees. Yes. yes, because it comes automatically when you are in the system. Now transfer fees for motor. Saloons, the private vehicles, yes. is 84,000. 84, yes, commercial. Plus the bank charges plus the, of 2,000. 500, yeah. around yes. somewhere there. Yes, mm -hmm. commercial vehicles, uh, engineering plants, uh, uh, the rest is, is 104,000. Yes. Then for motorcycles, okay. it is 74,000. 74, yes, that's okay. it, that is it, yeah. So, uh, you, you make your payments, then we shall transfer the vehicle. I think does that to respond to Joseph here? Joseph for decades asking. Hey, I have Esther also to needs to know that he has mm. to pay advance income tax. Oh, yes. 280. Like I said, the minibus, 14 seats, times okay. 20,000. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Joseph here is, uh, was asking that uh, he bought a vehicle, but the de facto registered owner is not cooperating. He, he, he has tried, I think, tried to get in touch with him. But uh, that person is not cooperating. He's he's unwilling to actually he's transfer, transfer the vehicle. The vehicle. And this is a uh, very common, it especially very common. with yes. some of the car bonds. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Buy and then they tell you they're not uh, available. You know that kind. How can you really assist, or how can he be assisted? Actually, that that issue has uh, has reappeared severely, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, a car bond sells the vehicle to you. You mm -hmm. say it's someone. Someone says it to me. Yes, now uh, upon transfer, I visit the car bond. Mm. Please, uh, this is the vehicle. I, I'm the one in possession of them of this vehicle. Mm. I bought it from this person. Mm. I have the series agreement. Uh, I would like you to initiate the transfer in my name. Most cases, I realize the car bond owners do not want to own the that. One, yes. I tell you, please go trace the original the person we sold the vehicle to to transfer the vehicle. So uh, that's why court order has come in. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because when court has directed us to has ordered us to transfer the vehicle into your names, as long as we follow our procedures for court order transfer process, we shall help him transfer the vehicle. But uh, I know some ask for weird money. Mm. Yes, you mm. must have heard this. Someone tells you I need eight hundred thousand, but you find processing a court order is like two hundred and fifty. Yes, like two hundred and fifty or three hundred. But now three hundred vis-à-vis the eight hundred. You go through court and we shall help you transfer there. And you see the beauty about it is that as you advertise, if he's interested, hey, if he's interested, if he, if he's interested he will come okay. to your A. Uh, actually, when I initiate, uh, the, it is the station head who initiates the, the first transfer. We call okay. it first transfer because the other party is not, is not present. When I initiate, they receive a, a notification. Yes, I receive some at office. I say, okay, this person has visited you to transfer the vehicle into his names because he's in possession of the vehicle and he has showed you the agreements. You have not transferred the vehicle. You are, you are not in agreement. So he has opted for court. And you see, us refusing to act as per the court order, it is also a legal case for our legal team. Of course. Yes. yes. So we, we shall transfer. Then you will report to police if uh, the vehicle was stolen or not. You report to police, then we handle it from there. Yes. I think our hope is not lost actually. Uh, it resurrects a lot of hope. Exactly. Uh, there is uh, one anonymous atten mm. attendee mm. who is saying that uh, he's the second user of the motor vehicle and the first user had bought it from a company. The card is still in the name of the company. That is the same thing. So where the if the card is in the same uh, in the name of the company, is it a green logbook? If it's not a green logbook, either way, green or white, yes. We follow the normal court order process, uh, advertise. If they are concerned, they will show up. Yeah. If they are not concerned, advertise after 14 days, then bring the vehicle for inspection, process the affidavit and court order, but fill in the manual forms, we shall transfer the vehicle. Which vehicle is it? If it's a commercial, you will pay 104000 for transfer fees, 12000 for inspection. Uh, if it's a private, it will be 84000 uh, Uganda shillings and uh, 12,000 for inspection fees.
Summer was given an old log, an old car, mm. okay, and was given the logbook. I think the old logbook, mm. an ID, and uh, <laughs> the drugs pass. Yeah, I know. I know what happens uh, behind there is that's what happens. Someone has given you uh, has given you uh, a, a logbook. He has given you that green logbook. He has given you a, a car and a car key. You think ownership is done? No, and his ID. Ownership does not stop there. Ownership, actually I would encourage people who are buying motor vehicles mm. that if you are buying a vehicle and you realize it has, or you find it has this green logbook, mm. kindly first advise this person to validate the vehicle. Yes, validating it, I mean to put it on our URA system. system. Yes, online system. When they have validated it, life becomes easy. Even transfers become easy. When it's like this, I even encourage them, make sure if you are paying them money, reduce the money that you're supposed to pay because you know ahead you are going to process. Yes, you are going to process for transfer and then validation process. Yes. There is a Shiba Mwibachi, mm. I think it's a certain issue she bought from, uh, from uh, a southern Sudanese, I think, national who failed to appear. And uh, she's saying, how can we assist her? Uh, do a transfer, I think it all to a to court order court uh, mm. process. Mm. Okay, um, I don't know, um, what else can you add on to this? Uh, what I would add uh, on this, I encourage people if you because where we are heading to, we are going to digitalization of, uh, of uh, our systems, our motor vehicles, our number plates. I encourage uh, people who buy vehicles, ensure by the time you are completing your balance. The vehicle has been transferred into your names. Mm. The law now requires us within three months after the purchase of the motor vehicle, you should have you should transfer it into your names. And the, it's on the owners of both parties, the transferrer and the transferee, the seller and the buyer. Yes, transfer that motor vehicle because we don't know what the future holds. Because when we start digitalizing, you'll find the number plate by the time the vehicle passes and it is on our, on our screen, on our camera, or if we have roadblocks and they require this vehicle is in the name, is not in your names, we shall be request you to produce the owner. So you are advised, please make sure you transfer the vehicle within the three months and do not buy vehicles which are not validated. If you have already fallen a victim, ensure your vehicle is validated like I have, uh, have discussed. Maybe the main discussion now is on the, on the I know now people have taxify, Uber, or, yes. Uh, yes, Uber, those 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 vehicles. To gain day. Yes. Now it's that's the team we are looking at at managing actually vis a vis like collecting advanced income tax. That's what now we are planning. Yes, but the next system we are all these vehicles must be online. We are encouraged. Validation is for free. Yes, you do not incur any expense. All you need is your TIN password and then the registered person in that logbook. Validation is free. Apply. We have all the vehicles online because at, uh, at some time we need to know the number of vehicles we have in this country. Yes, which makes even a work very easy. Right. Yes. We have uh, Miss Abon here, Blessing. She mm -hmm. says that uh, she paid uh, advance income tax of up to 185000 mm -hmm. And then uh, she was told that she's supposed to make a top up over 16,750, which comes it to 200,000, and they were willing to actually pay. However, mm -hmm. when we request for additional assessment on URA mm -hmm. site, okay, mm -hmm. they get feedback that no changes had been made mm -hmm. to for the request for additional assessment. Yes. How do they handle the issue of, uh, of top ups? Yes, top ups. Now, uh, Abori, thank you for that. Uh, what happens with the top ups if you are out there and you're really on our portal? Uh, you do income tax now. You go register income tax. After you've registered for income tax, okay, the first option would have been alteration. Yes, alteration to respect to ref reflect the two hundred thousand. But on the occasion that you there is a transaction pending, you do income tax now. In the reference number when you are registering for income tax, put uh, top up U U B B four four zero P. Yes, go register you are 16,000, register the normal payment, you will give the reference, uh, that is the PR and the payment registration number, you attach, you write it on the application form, there is no one who will reject your application because you've done that. Yes, that will be the easiest way to handle that top up. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, there is, I think, uh, Joyce and uh, Alvin are asking almost the same thing, mm -hmm. that if a person who sold to me mm -hmm. died, 
Oh, that's a, that's a good one. Yes. Now, if a person who sold to you died, excuse me. What? Are, uh, if a person who sold to you the vehicle died, there is what we call transfer by letters of administration. Transfers by letters of administration. I mean, this person died, but he left people. He left a will. So, in the letters of administration, uh, it stipulates. Uh, okay, it shows or indicates the people that are the administrators of the property. Yes, if uh, let's say uh, a parent has died, he has uh, left three three children in his uh, in his will. So the children are going to be in his letters of administration. Now we the the three children they agree on who. Because the vehicle at the moment is owned by one person, can only be transferred into the names of one individual. Okay. So yes, so they agree on who should have the ownership of the motor vehicle mm -hmm. by registration. Yes, okay. they have a consent letter. They can sign a consent letter where all of them will endorse their signatures, uh, talking about appointing that person. Now we use letters of administration. We shall request the vehicle to come for inspection. Any nearest your office for inspection. Uh, uh, we need to look at that original, original uh, mm -hmm. letters of administration. Yes. Uh, we don't take it. We just look at it to compare with the okay, what? Yes, yeah, with, with, with what mm -hmm. is available. You get us a copy. Then we shall give you the manual transfer form. Because there we don't need to advertise. Because the person died. We don't expect the person to do what to come back. Then we transfer the vehicle now into the team of this appointed person. Okay. Yes. Now that appointed person is the one to transfer the vehicle to the to the new buyer. Okay. Yes. Can't can't the 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 what do they call it when someone passes on they leave a will can't the will work? No, we it is the letters of administration. The will does so, not. So you need to be the administrator. Of that yes. 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 Oh, of that okay. vehicle, yeah. Then uh, Mr. Alvin is saying Alvin Luhimba is saying. Uh, he has a car registered in the country where he was staying, mm -hmm. uh, maybe UK and uh, oh, America. Oh, how oh, how oh, does he get to process, process them? Country? Yes, now when uh, he has owned that vehicle, let's say in the UK, or he has been studying, or he has been working in the UK with that motor vehicle, uh, uh, we, we require you to have used that motor vehicle for a period of 12 months, 12 okay. months and above. Eh? If you have owned that vehicle, of course, with evidence that you have owned that vehicle for 12 months and uh, for a period of 12 months and above, mm -hmm. you and you are coming back to your country, you are actually a returning, a returning mm -hmm. resident. Eh? Uh, you are coming back, you will register that vehicle to get a, a duty free number plate. Okay. Yeah, you will be exempted from duty for a period of 12 months and above. You will be exempted from duty. Uh, pay registration fees, and then get the red number plate. Okay. Yes. And if someone wants to transfer that, because you see, mm. the duty free status is a status to an yeah, It's a status to an individual. So if, he, if Mr. Weavers now wants to sell it to me, mm -hmm. do I need to pay taxes? No, no, actually, before even we get there, what happens, we have mm -hmm. to also put in consideration our law. 15 years. Eh? Oh, yes, yeah, yes, yes. If the vehicle is above 15, 15 years, years, you will not bring it back. Yes, you not. You, you have to sell it to the other side. You will not come with it. So if you, it has to be below 15 years. Now, a it is a statutory, it is a statutory limit. Statutory limit. Okay. 15, 15 years. Now, when you transfer the vehicle into your names, mm -hmm. no, that is his uh, his uh, property. The exemption is not transferable. The exemption is on him. Is on he's, him. Yes, is on him. So he will have to declare that vehicle for tax payments. Okay. Yes. There so when he sells it to me, I declare it for tax purposes. You declare it for tax purposes. And then actually, the red number plate uh, is actually changed. It is changed. Ordinary. Yes. So what you do, you surrender in the in the paying after paying your taxes, you surrender those number plates, and then uh, that is under customs. You surrender those number plates, and then get you get the same number, but now in black and white. Not in white and red. Talk about the personalized number plates. Oh yes, the ones for prestige. Mm -hmm. If someone ha actually has this uh, vehicle with that number plate, yes. can he transfer the number plate from that vehicle to another? Uh -huh. And uh, can, can can he if he transfers to me? Does it mean I need to register the vehicle? Exactly. Now, uh, yeah, there are numbers. Now that personalized number plate is your property. Okay. It is. It's not transferable. What happens if you've bought? If you have? Uh, 
because uh, you have paid for your number. Uh, by the way, the fees now it is two, 20 million. 20 million? It is 20 million. It buys another car. It buys another car. It's, another, it's a car on a car. So it's 20 million. Now that 20 million, uh, someone has paid 20 million with registration registration fees of 223. So you will not transfer that, property, that, that number plate. You are advised to do re-registration. You apply for re-registration, then you will get... Now, when we are issuing you the personalized number plate, it comes out with two numbers. That's if at first time importation, you immediately got the personalized number or are registered for the personalized number. Okay. The, you are released uh, for a personalized number with an ordinary number. Okay. Yes, but then ordinary number is not given to you. So uh, upon registration, you will get the number at the time of, of registering for that personalized number plate, yes. So if it was a UAR e. at the point of importation, e. I'll actually get my UAR. UAR, yes, then you will transfer the UAR. You keep with your number. Yes, if you have another motor vehicle, then definitely you will apply for registration of that ordinary motor vehicle now to get to put back your personalized. So the personalized number can actually be transferred from one vehicle to another exactly. upon, upon payment of re -registration. registration fees. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. There is a, a, a one, uh, Julius, he says that he lost his original logbook, mm -hmm. uh, the green one, the one that we have been talking about. Exactly. How can you validate the vehicle? That's what now I was telling you now. You see how it is hard. This one, you cannot get a copy. So what he has to do, Julius, wherever you are, you have to apply for uh, search and certification. It is 60,000. Okay. Uh, we shall give you the details pertaining all that uh, that motor vehicle. Then you will use the details to validate. Okay. That is to put the vehicle on the system, on the URI system. Then you get the logbook. You get now a white logbook like this one. Okay. Mm. I think all solutions are available. Mm. Keep your questions coming in. There is a one uh, Shiba. Shiba is saying that how do I search the rightful owner of the vehicle? Yes, the same. Applying for you write a letter. You you put it in writing. No, I think mm. she's talking about uh, uh, if, for example, I go to the website oh. and I do search. If you go to, to the if this person who is selling to me is actually the rightful owner. If there is the rightful owner mm. on the on the portal, we used to have the ask you are a Okay. In one way, it was. I'm told it was misused. So, uh, and we're not even collecting revenue. We are not collecting yes. revenue. Yes, we're not collecting revenue. So you have to apply for such a certification to have the real information from us, because okay. the information we can own. Yes, the information we can only apply for such a certification, Lydia. Then uh, sixty thousand. We shall give you the right info. Mr. Edward Rovega, you just joined the webinar. Thank you for joining and. Uh, you wanted to find out, uh, you bought the car from the expatriate to left. Mm. I think uh, uh, Edgar has already talked about this. Mm. If someone is upset, you need to get the court process. Hey, hey, we need also to co consider now if he's an expatriate, he might but find he left his, the country. Left the country, yes. might, it might be a CD, a diplomatic oh, number. Yes. That diplomatic number is not transferable. Yes. What we have to do, uh, they have we, to go for, actually, they go for boarding off. <laughs> talk about, now talk about that boarding yes, off now because it is a common <laughs> word that yes, we are boarding uh, off vehicle. Yes, now what happens boarding off vehicle, we board off vehicles which have not paid taxes. Imagine now, okay, that is the first one. It is a CD. A CD, these are country diplomats. They do not pay taxes. They are exempted from, from duty. Uh, so they, they are given their diplomatic number plate CD. Okay. Uh, when he sells it, and you are not a CD, you are not a diplomat, Yes. You are immediately you are supposed to appoint a registered clearing agent immediately for declaration to declare the for registration to register that motor vehicle to an ordinary number plate. When the, you appoint the agent, he captures for you entries to pay taxes. Okay. Yes. Now it also depends on the time the vehicle has been here or has spent in Uganda. Yes. Uh, if it has been here for some time, for a long time, uh, I think it is around four years and above, then they depreciate it. So you pay the tax on the depreciation. Yeah, you, yeah, you pay taxes. So it is URA that assesses the tax. Yes, it is URA okay. that assesses the tax. You pay taxes on the depreciation amount, four years and above, yeah. Okay. Mm.
So you do not actually keep Hey, you do not keep do, don't drive a CD. You can't <laughs> drive a CD now. Of course I know you might survive one day, two days, a month, a week, two months, but at one time you will be caught and the public needs to know that a URA are user services of informants. Yes. You can import information uh, which we actually pay for because uh, when we get that information and then we are able to collect the taxes, I think five percent is given mm. to the to the person consumer. who actually gives the information. So as you're driving the car out of your fence, you know there is someone watching, expecting to earn income and they have direct the information immediately. To uh, that is why you see mm. some people actually say, ah, I was parking my I had parked my car at the supermarket, then the URA enforcement officers came. Yes. They were tipped and they came for the vehicle because it okay. does not fulfill uh, the requirements of being on the road. Mm -hmm. There is uh, someone asking here, Johnson, the total cost of absentee transfer in estimates? Yes, the total cost is just, it's just if it is a, a private motor vehicle, the, the cost is a transfer fees. Okay. Which is eighty-four thousand inspection. It is twelve thousand. That is now for URA. Okay. Yeah. Now how? Because the court order, it's you, the client or the transferee, mm. who gets the court order. Mm. Yes. That is not URA. So our URA, it is a uh, inspection fees twelve thousand, eighty-four thousand. Mm. For the uh, case of uh, commercial vehicles, it is one zero four thousand. That is the transfer, the transfer fees. That's 104,000 Uganda shillings, 12,000 in inspection report, uh, and then advance tax, depending on the tonnage of your vehicle or the seating capacity, if it's a minibus, a PSV. Okay. Mr. Tanamasiko <coughs> here is uh, saying that he bought a car from someone, mm -hmm. and uh, who, who, okay, he cleared the payment according to what it says, mm -hmm. but then... Uh, the person refused to transfer, so he engaged a lawyer mm -hmm. who advised him to obtain a court order to be able to to authorize transfer, transfer of, yes. of, of the same. Mm -hmm. So he's saying that uh, what does you are require of him? And now you are here we require, of course, to to ascertain the the possession of the motor vehicle. Okay. So we shall request him. We need inspection of that motor vehicle. After we inspected, we, we need the court order, we need the affidavit, stamp duty paid on that affidavit. Yes, that's what our, that's what we need. We shall give him the manual transfer form or the form three which he will fill. Then we transfer the vehicle into his name. I think Ben joined us. Without days. forgetting the newspaper, by the, the way. Newspaper <laughs> because mm -hmm. he has 14 days. Yes, that, uh, 14 days. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, ben, I think, joined us late because mm -hmm. uh, he's actually asking us to stress the importance of tra tra transferring, I mean, validating the vehicle because mm -hmm. tra validating and even transfer. transfer. Because he says he, he, has, uh, he has been driving a car that was sold to him by someone, okay, and it is in the name of the seller. In the, name okay. of the, seller, yes. in the name of the seller, so he mm. says, Master, you transfer. And of course, before um, Edgar comes in, mm. uh, I'm also going to pose a question. Mm. Do you have a vehicle? You have a vehicle? Because <laughs> if you're driving a vehicle that is not in your name, is it? It's not your vehicle. Do you, you even have control over that vehicle? So maybe Edgar, you can add on and. Uh, yes, now, uh, like you've asked him, he does not have a vehicle because his vehicle, uh, it can only be his vehicle if it is registered under his name. Uh, and you know to register it under his names uh, okay you know uh, what we do like Ugandans it is after we faced with it we've been faced with a challenge mm -hmm. that we realize the importance uh, like of change of ownership uh, let's say that vehicle gets an accident God forbid uh, to get back that vehicle from police the vehicle must be in your names but do you know the inconveniences you will go through to process for to ownership and in the, the occasion that the person is not available? You know we have to inspect the vehicle, but now we, and at this point it is at the police. So those are the lengthy procedures you will have to go through to transfer. So it's better you transfer it at this time mm. uh, when, when you, are, you are free to do whatever you are doing before it can get an issue. Yes, that's what happens. And then uh, someone else, someone else can, can, can try to transfer that motor vehicle if it's not in your names. But if he uses a court order, then we request him. Even your friends, we've seen cases here where a friend, you've given a friend to drive for the vehicle. People have problems here. People have problems. 
Because he says to the money lender, he says, this is my vehicle. At that time, he has gone to the money lender, he comes for inspection. We've inspected the vehicle. You see how your friend takes away your vehicle? Exactly. Yes, that's what because happens. It's yes, so it's important to transfer the vehicle. Uh, someone is asking that, uh, do, you, do you bring the motor vehicle for inspection first before the court order? Yeah, now, what happens, you advertise. Now, after you have advertised, then you bring the vehicle for inspection. After advertising, that's uh, when you bring uh, uh, the Now you advertise uh, after, you advertise if you have the logbook. Because it's the logbook that will tell us who the registered owner is, in the, even in the newspapers. Okay. Now on the occasion that you do not have a logbook uh, to know the registered owner, then you are advised to bring it first for inspection. Because even when you are advertising, we need to, uh, uh, when you are advertising, you need to know the number plate. Because you know you can even come to advertise to, for inspection. We find the number that is on the car is not the number for that car. <laughs> yes, those are some of the vehicles we, we, we yes them. we retain here because uh, you can do what you can inspect then go for advert, which we also help because in the court, I'm um, informed in the court they have to ask you for that advert that you have tried to trace this person and he has not been able you've not been able to to find him. So they also ask you for the what for the advert. Yes, it and is just logical. It's just logical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, how much is the cost for a new number plate for a motor vehicle or a motorcycle? Uh, for a duplicate, it is forty nine thousand. The original? Uh, for the original now, that is at a, at a, at a first time uh, registration mm -hmm. or first time importation. That is one point five, depending on the CCs. But for our private vehicles, it is one point uh, one point five. Then uh, the, the CCs above 3,500 mm -hmm. should be around 1.75. When you can, you go on the portal, on the URA portal, uh, there is a tax, motor vehicle tax calculator. It has uh, a few things it requests you to input. You put in the, the CIF, then you put in the gross weight, put in the year of manufacture, then you, you will see the, the fees, the applicable fees. They will even ask you for the CCs, that is the power. Yes, so if it is about 3,500, uh, 3, then you will see the, the, amount, the amount of registration for the number plate will also pop up. Actually, right now that we are under the E, mm. the E, the E, e era, yes. please uh, make our website your friend. Mm. Please go to our website. On the right hand side of the website, you will find uh, tax assistant. It is just one of the sections there. That is where the motor vehicle tax calculator is located. Mm -hmm. Then besides it are A to Z tax topics. Now the A to Z tax topics give you simplified guides on motor vehicle validation, what the process is like on motor vehicle transfer. You'll find licensing fees. You'll find uh, taxation of, uh, of, um, of motor vehicles, motor vehicles like yes, advanced, advanced tax on motor vehicles. So the topics are well arranged in alphabetical order and very updated. So you could uh, get there and be positioned to self-teach yourself. Because you see, the time I have been in this uh, institution, I've realized that tax education happens at the point when someone needs it. Exactly. That That's is why you see people asking. When the problem comes person. in, exactly. immediately. So please go there and be able to be educated. There is uh, someone talking about um, allowable expenses available as a transporter and how do I treat this advance tax on my trucks? Is it a uh, creditable? Is it uh, a final? Now what happens, uh, uh, advance tax is a final tax when you don't file. Okay. Uh, yes. Now when you are filing your returns, of course, uh, for accountability purposes, upon filing your final returns, this advance tax is like a, a provisional it is a prepayment, okay. it's a provisional return, mm -hmm. like a provisional payment. Yes, so you will use it to offset. Let's say I have paid advance tax of, uh, let's say, 500,000, and I have filed my return. My return requires me to pay 600,000. So if you have paid the, uh, the other advance tax of 600, you only pay 100, oh, because okay. you already paid the what? So, it is so you, use it, you can use it as a, an offset to offset your you are final liability. So the essence is actually to collect revenue yes. from those who do not who want do not, to. Yes, it's a compli it. compliance tool. Okay. Yes. And that is why actually it is given at the point of uh, PSV when you're getting uh, your PSV, mm -hmm. we, we, ask, we, we ask for this advance. The tax is asked from you in advance because 
we want you at the end of the accounting period to account yes, by actually, filing a return. Actually, under the tax <coughs> procedures code section 43 requires uh, any taxpayer who, who who's getting a, a permit from transport licensing board to, to have cleared to have to get a tax clearance certificate from the commissioner general so you must have declared that advanced tax for accountability for you to get the to get the license the operator license from the transport licensing board okay um uh, there is a fideri fideri is asking about letters of administration mm -hmm. but is it possible if the purchase was completed before the seller died say he bought uh, the vehicle two months ago and by the time the person who sold the parcel no transfer had been made or completed but now he wants uh, he's not aware of even the new administrators how is he assisted the seller mm -hmm. who sold mm -hmm. him the vehicle died mm -hmm. but he died before transfer mm -hmm. transfer to the same vehicle he's not aware of of the is not aware of the family of the yes. of the person then he would go through but how did he know he died <laughs> definitely someone who, who informed you he died should be able to lead you to his people to to process the letters of administration now on the occasion that of course you do not know the person and you can't get then definitely you use the court order process of absentee transfer that's okay. what you will use yes but now if you know the person died definitely someone who informed you he died should lead you to his people and it is it becomes very convenient yeah okay mm. um I think many more questions are still coming in, I don't know, but um, well, there are colleagues who are, who are asking if uh, this uh, presentation will be sent to them or a recording of the webinar. I think we are capturing your details and uh, oh, yes. we shall definitely relay this, mm -hmm. but also feel free to contact us through our available platforms. Uh, we are going to actually do, uh, we are going to do we are going to load this onto our social media sites such that you can be in position to actually uh, get get this information if you need it. But most of us need it because of course, uh, we need this information. Uh, it is important. Every, every one of us, mm -hmm. at least you have uh, maybe a vehicle or maybe a motorcycle or you are intending to buy. So you need to be guided with this information mm -hmm. such that uh, you are able to to. To, to do what is supposed to be done right. Otherwise, uh, you may be there uh, thinking that you're owning a car. Yeah. But in actual sense, you're not owning, not owning a car the because car. it is in someone else's mm -hmm. name. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, as uh, we plan to close this, uh, Edgar, feel free to have any more submission that you want. Yeah, more submission. Uh, I do love to maybe uh, the other processes processes we do at uh, at headquarters service office or motor vehicle licensing. Uh, we have the registration. There are people out there who have uh, grounded vehicles. People have grounded vehicles uh, written off. So yes. You are, supp you are supposed to or you are encouraged to apply for deregistration so that we remove those vehicles from our system yes to have a clean a clean register then uh, uh, we do the registration for people who go and modify vehicles out of the country uh, you've seen the land cruisers with long chassis like tourist vehicles yes uh, they do they take them to Zanzibar for to, to add on the chassis but it accommodates it gives them that good space that big space in the car for tourists so uh you do the registration temporary registration for temporary re-export they take it uh modify then you register back the vehicle yes we also do uh what we call caveats yes we do endorsements now endorsements uh, they come in as a result of uh, uh Third party interest like I, I acquire a loan from a bank, okay. then the bank attaches your ve attaches your vehicle to to uh, put a caveat. Okay. Yes, like they attach a third party endorsement. Yes, yes that's what we do. Uh, so uh, people out there make sure uh, when the bank uh, puts a caveat or endorses your car, uh, you after payment of the of the loan amount. Ensure they give you the letter because the challenge we face with caveats, you get the letter for caveat removal and sit back with it. Then you come after years, you want to move the caveat. 
which is very wrong because we might ask you to get a current letter so what you do when they have given you the when you have given you the readies letter immediately process it uh, we do uh, we remove the caveat so that you own the vehicle fully with that, with no encumbrances okay. yes I, the most important thing is do not finish the payment before someone has transferred the vehicle into your names yes because it saves us all the hassles for diaries, uh complaints yes issues of uh, you know when you go back to the bond they ask you for a lot of money because you bought a vehicle which you do not even know ownership when you feel you have a query or you do not believe in what you are buying or you have a second thought please apply for such a certification so that we give you the right information that you yes that you make your you make an informed decision before you buy that motor vehicle that's what i can uh, that's what i can say uh, duplicate number plates uh, that is normal if you've lost two numbers uh, we request you to come for inspection and process the number there are people who are actually we call it encouraging theft uh, let people not steal your numbers, then leave a, a paper with a number with a phone number. Call me if you very want a number. Very common in Nansa. Yes, very common in Nansa. <laughs> actually, the, most of the cases come from Nansa. <laughs> what happens? Uh, apply for duplicate number plate. The fee, because the three hundred they are requesting you for. Imagine applying for a number plate. It is forty nine thousand, and then uh, one thirty seven thousand. You have your number plate, and you, without hassles of phone calls uh, and theft. Thank you. Uh, it has been nice uh, sharing with you. Uh, Thank you so much uh, for sharing with us. It has actually been uh, very, very informative. Actually, I'm learning a lot because uh, for me, what I'm taking away, mm -hmm. inspection, mm -hmm. very critical, very especially critical. If, uh, mm -hmm. if there is any doubt or mm -hmm. in the information you're providing or uh, URA wants to certify itself that what it is doing is right. Inspection is very important. Mm -hmm. Actually, when you're asked, to bring the car for inspection, please don't get scared because our interest is in protecting your asset. A motor vehicle is an asset to you. A motorcycle is an asset to you. Mm -hmm. It is an asset that you can actually use to acquire more assets. You can use it to get uh, financial uh, financial uh, loans mm -hmm. and, yes. and all those things. Mm -hmm. So please treat it with the most delicacy that it deserves. Uh, certification, mm -hmm. such and such certification, is that important. one has actually learned it that when you want authenticity mm -hmm. of all these things, please ensure that you search and certify some of these. Uh, you, you, you pay for search and certification. You've been positioned to actually uh, uh, get the correct information about that particular motor vehicle, yes, especially yes. those who want to purchase. Mm -hmm. What's what purchase? Is vehicle? Mm -hmm. You need to get to know who exactly yeah. owns uh, this motor vehicle. And of course, lastly, for our colleagues who are into, uh, who want to pay for that but insurance third party there is no way it is going to be paid if Without the motor validation. vehicle that you're presenting is actually not validated validated it means that you will not be able to pay for motor third party and when you do not pay you cannot move it on the road because it becomes dangerous to the third party okay it becomes very dangerous and the, road the, users, poli yes. poli the police will not allow you actually to move a vehicle that does not have third party so please go validate your motor vehicle if it is in the old logbook validate it, capture the details to the system to be in position also save you, okay? The burden just in case anything happens. So validate your vehicle and when you buy a car or when you sell a car, please ensure that you transfer, transfer the vehicle. The vehicle. Mm -hmm. These fees look as if they are much, the 84,000, but it saves you a lot of inconvenience that comes with the failure to actually transfer this vehicle. Because me as a sailor, I'll have a problem in case the car causes an accident. So please validate, transfer your vehicle. For being a very good audience, we'd like to thank you and uh, see you again next Thursday in another webinar. God bless you and uh, developing Uganda together. together. <laughs>